Hi there. These are the brushes in the new brush pack and the brush pack for painter essentials in the bristly brush category. I'm going to go through and first show you the ones that are in the painter essentials category. I'm just going to start from the top, go down here. I've pulled them out onto a menu so that I don't have to go back up and go through the brushes menu. I'm just using them at their default setting and I'm going to draw a couple strokes and show you what they look like. So here is agitate. As you can see, a wild and crazy, really unconstrained stroke, size a little bit, maintains the same character throughout. The next brush is antenna. If you're drawing bug antenna, this might be a good brush for you to use. So it starts large, goes small. They kind of look like bug antenna. Go slow, they go a little longer and quick. They taper off rather quickly. So that is the antenna brush variant. The next is fiber. And it's pretty much just what it sounds like. Draw some vertical, fibrous kind of things. Again, good for multiple uses. Fiber is just a convenient name for what they look like. This is the default size. You can, of course, scale up or down. They go above. They grow above or paint above the cursor, as you can see. So that is the fiber brush. Fibrous is similar, but it has a bunch of short little, mostly transparent fibers that will follow you around. If I make the brush a little bit smaller, you can see they follow your stroke. Very randomly opaque. A great brush for pretty much anything that you could use something that looks like this for. Limited, of course, only by your imagination. And that is the fibrous brush. The next brush is Hydra. This draws pretty nice multi-fibered lines. And then if you push harder at the end of the stroke and pull up, you get that kind of nice vertical direction in the line. That is Hydra. Quill ball. This is best used in a circular kind of stroke. And it makes a kind of a ball shape. In smaller sizes, it gets a bit more random. You can, of course, paint with it pretty quickly. So again, Quill Ball is a descriptive name, but uh, really it will do whatever you want it to do. You can also use it just as a straight brush. One side will paint flat based on your direction, and the other side will paint with wobblies. So that is Quill Ball. Here's Shag. This looks an awful lot like the old shag rugs, the old shag carpet that you would buy in the 70s. And more often than not, it would be some strange avocado green color. And you could sink your toes into it because it was usually about an inch long. So that is shag. It is a brush that follows the direction your cursor moves in. Use it for anything. It's a good brush for painting plants. It's a good brush for painting just about anything you want. That is shag. Short fiber brush that paints with, again, short fibers, much like fibrous, but these are very opaque. And so anywhere you need multi-fibers, this might be a brush of choice. These are, once again, the default settings that the brushes come in, and you can adjust them, really do what you want them to do a little bit. So that is short fiber. The next brush is steel wool, and it kind of looks like rough steel wool. This brush blends and varies the value of the color you're using. So it'll go from a darker value up to white. That is steel wool. And the last brush in the Painter Essentials is Streamer. And this is really more brush for painting linear things. It could be streamers. It follows your cursor. It could be jungle vines. It could be a whole lot of anything. Just whatever you want. Of course, you can resize it, make thin streamers. Sometimes it's a good sketching brush. One of my favorite, in fact, my favorite tend to be these little brushes that you can actually draw something with. And that is Streamer. And these are the 10 brushes that are included with Painter Essentials. In the Painter Brush Pack and in the Particle Shop Brush Pack plugins for Photoshop, you have five additional brushes that come with the 10 in the Painter Essentials pack. First one is Feeler. 
This is multi lines that stay parallel till you turn a curve and then they collapse and get closer to the cursor as you turn. You can tell they vary slightly. They blend underneath with some of the other color. In fact, they bleed quite a bit. If you notice the bleeds about 99%, so they do blend. And those are the feeler brushes. The next variant are ridges. These paint a series of parallel lines with a bunch of smaller lines in between them. And they're mostly useful in horizontal lines. They don't follow the direction of your cursor. Kind of collapse on themselves, then draw again. Those are the ridges brush variants of the bristly category. The next are stubble. Kind of short, tiny little fibers. They go from very, very small to kind of larger and chunkier. They're very random. What would you use them for? It's up to your imagination. Make them smaller, a little less stubbly. Make them larger. I really like the variation that you can see from the very tiny, thin, fibrous to these fat, kind of chubby little fibers. That is the stubble brush. Next is the woolly variant. It's supposed to look like kind of wool fibers. Of course, wool doesn't have fibers that are made of spots. But wool does have kind of these nice random directions. This brush does follow your cursor. Useful brush for a lot of things. All of these brushes would be very useful for vegetation, areas and landscapes, hair, anything you can think of that you might need something that kind of represents a bristly surface. So this is woolly. And the final brush is yarn. It paints a general interpretation of what a strand of yarn looks like. Good sketching brush. All of these thinner brushes and thinner sizes are great sketching brushes. This one's no different. So that is the yarn brush. And those five extra brushes are the brushes that come in the bristly brush pack for painter and for particle shop. First ten brushes are the bristly brush pack for painter essentials.